Yahuwah is great, greatly to be praised. He is to be feared above all mighty ones. Hallelujah. Some trust in chariots and some in horses. But we will remember the name of Yahuwah, our mighty one. Hallelujah. 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 Praise Yahuwah. Praise you. I'd like to welcome everyone to Kodesh Nation and to our Shabbat class. Hallelujah. Brothers and sisters, what we're going to be talking about today is the Kodesh and the profane. The Kodesh and the profane. Praise you. Of course, we know Kodesh means set apart. Praise Yahuwah, and what the King James Bible calls holy, but more correctly, set apart. In profane, see, what we have to understand is that which is profane is the opposite of Kodesh. Praise Yahuwah. And profane doesn't necessarily mean just exceedingly wicked. Profane just means common. Common or not set apart. Praise Yahuwah. So the Kodesh and the profane. Because, see, wickedness would be the opposite of righteousness. But profane, profanity, that's the opposite of Kodeshah, set-apartness. Hallelujah. And if we turn to Yekezkel 22, Ezekiel 22, that would be our opening passage of scripture and you'll see why I have entitled this lesson the Kodesh and the profane you cast 22 and we're going to start in verse 23 and it reads and the word of Yahuwah came to me saying son of man say to her you are a land that is not cleansed or rained upon in the day of displeasure, there is a conspiracy of her Nebaim in her midst, like a roaring lion tearing the prey. They have devoured life. They have taken treasure and wealth. They have made many widows in her midst. Her Kohanim have done violence to my Torah, and they profane my Kodesh matters. They have not distinguished between the Kodesh and profane, nor have they made known between the unclean and the clean, and they have hidden their eyes from my Shabbatot. And I am profaned in their midst. Her leaders in her midst are like wolves tearing the prey to shed blood, to destroy lives, and to get greedy gain. And her Nebaim have coated them with whitewash, seeing a false vision and divining a lie for them, saying, Thus said the Adonai Yahuwah when Yahuwah had not spoken. The people of the land have practiced oppression and committed robbery and have oppressed the poor and needy, and they oppress the stranger without right ruling. And I sought for a man among them who would make a wall and stand in the breach before me on behalf of the land that I should not destroy it, but I did not find one. Therefore, I have poured out my displeasure on them. I have consumed them with the fire of my wrath, and I have put their way on their own head, declares the Adon Yahuwah. Hallelujah. So what I want to emphasize about this passage is verse 26 about her Kohanim. See, it was the Kohanim that were responsible, the priests, the Kohanim. They were responsible for teaching Torah, instructing the people, giving them understanding of Yah's word. Verse 26, her Kohanim have done violence to my Torah, they have pro and they profane my Kodesh matters. They have not distinguished between the Kodesh and profane, nor have they made known between the unclean and clean, and they have hidden their eyes from my Shabbatot, and I am profaned in their midst. Mm -hmm. See, that's what happens when we don't make difference. Praise Yahuwah, especially us as mores, teachers, when we don't make difference between the Kodesh and the profane, Yah himself is profaned. In our midst, he's, he's made common in the eyes of the people. Praise Yah. It's like Masha, that when he had, uh, when he judged Masha. 
for losing his temper with the people. Just calling them rebels and smacking the rock in order to get the water to come out when Yah told him to speak to the rock. He said that you did not, uh, you did not set me apart before the people. In other words, the people are looking to you as an example of Yah, and you made it out like I'm like you. The way you acted before the people, the, that's how the people, that's how the people look at me. Because you were supposed to be a reflection of me. So Masha, he did not set Yah apart before the people. And that's why he was not allowed to go into the promised land. Praise Yah. But the Kohanim, that they did not make difference between the Kodesh and the profane. The set apart and then that which is just common. Praise Yah. See, brothers and sisters, the Yah has dealt with me in the area of Kodeshah for, for many years. That I had uh, began to turn toward Yah about 25 years ago, 26 years ago. And I uh, just started out in, in the regular churches, and I believe I started out in Assembly of God, and went to Evangelicals, and then eventually the Charismatics, and just in search for truth the whole time. You know, the Ruach guiding me uh, into truth. But I did have a real experience with Yah as far as just departing from sin and beginning to pursue a relationship with Him. Praise Yah, even, even though I was in error in where I was, but brothers and sisters, that Yah had put a hunger in me for Kodeshah from the very beginning, that I would be in churches and and uh, I would be bothered by just the lack of set-apartness, where there wasn't much difference between us and the outside world, and even to the point where that I would bring things to the attention of leadership and, you know, I, I wouldn't be received. They, they, they wouldn't change just what they were doing. And so uh, I would say about in the late 1990s, that's when I started moving around in, in what would be called holiness circles, the holiness churches. I got away from the regular churches and got around holiness people, holiness churches as they called it. Praise Yah. And that's where there was a strong emphasis on being set apart, on set apartness, not being worldly, not being like the world, because we're set apart unto the Most High. That's right. Praise Yah. So it, it, it's with this backdrop and basis of Kodeshah that I came into the Torah truths. Praise Yah about that this would be more towards uh, 90, 99, 2000, around that time, and just started coming into more of the, the Torah truths. It really started in 97. I came into the Shabbat and clean foods at that time and then really embraced the fullness of Torah, probably 2000, 2001. Praise Yah. But stayed amongst people who believed in Kodeshah, and we were even part of a ministry down in Louisiana. Uh, that praise Yah, that you know, believed in believed in Kodeshah, but believed in keeping Yah's commandments, you know, to a certain extent. But since we've come into this Hebrew Israelite movement, brothers and sisters, praise Yahuwah, that that is one area that we have found to be sorely lacking in this movement. And that is in, in the area of set-apartness. Praise Yah. Even to the point where I, I, see, I see certain brethren that even have a similar background as myself. Praise Yahuwah. More of like a, a, a holiness, a, apostolic Pentecostal type background. Or they were, they were taught set-apartness. Taught to set themselves apart from the world. I've seen brethren like that get into this Hebrew Israelite movement and lose some of that. Lose some of what they've gained. Lose some of what they've learned. And become more like some of these these uh, other Hebrew Israelites that were never into Kodeshah in the first place. Praise Yah. 
So that's why that, that we we embrace the Israelite truth. But we haven't really immersed ourselves into the movement. We really haven't. Mm -hmm. Praise Yahuwah. So we're not really, uh, praise Yah, that, that, that we just, we, we just kind of keep ourselves on the outside because this is what we believe, brothers and sisters. We believe that Yah is bringing a remnant out of the remnant. Praise Yah. That, that his his criteria in the end isn't going to be just uh, awakened Israelites or those who have come to the knowledge of who they are. No, no, there's going to be many more cuts than that, brothers and sisters. Praise Yah. And so that's where, you know, he, he's, he is bringing out, he's bringing forth a people out of this movement now. Praise Yahuwah. That have a hunger for that set apartness. Praise Yahuwah. That have a hunger and a thirst after righteousness that are not satisfied just with the common ways of this movement and people in this movement that say to themselves, even sitting in some of these congregations, that there's got to be something better than this. There's got to be something higher than this. Praise Yah. But not putting difference between the Kodesh and the profane. See, our people have had a historic problem in this area. Had a problem since day one. This is why Yah would send the Nebaim, the prophets, to them. Rising up early. Praise Yah. And rebuking the people. Trying to turn them back to Torah, because one thing that our people had a big problem with was conforming to the surrounding nations, conforming to their ways. And what really got Yah angry was when our people would mix the ways of Yah with the ways of the heathen around them. See, Yahusha said, I would that you were either cold or hot, but because you're lukewarm, that I will spew you out of my mouth. In other words, just either be all the way Yah, all the way Torah, or be all the way a heathen, mm -hmm. all the way backslidden. But don't try to mix this thing up. Be kind of Yah, kind of worldly. Don't, don't, don't try to mix this thing up. That's worse right. than being worldly altogether. Right. Hallelujah. Praise Yah. See, what I want to do next, I want to go into some of the Torah instruction concerning set-apartness. Turn to Devarim, Deuteronomy chapter 7. Deuteronomy 7. We're going to start in verse 1. It reads, When Yahuwah your Elohim brings you into the land which you go to possess, he shall also clear away many nations before you, the Hittites and the Girgashites and the Amorites and the Canaanites and the Perizzites and the Chawites and the Yebuzites, seven nations greater and mightier than you. And when Yahuwah your Elohim gives, you, gives them over to you, you shall smite them and put them under the ban completely. Make no covenant with them and show them no favor. And do not intermarry with them. You do not give your daughter to his son and you do not take his daughter for your son. For he turns your sons away from following me to serve other mighty ones. Then the displeasure of Yahuwah shall burn against you and promptly destroy you. But this is what you do to them. Break down their altars and destroy their pillars and cut down their asherim and burn their carved images with fire. For you are a Kodesh people to Yahuwah your Elohim. Yahuwah your Elohim has chosen you to be a people for himself, a treasured possession above all the peoples on the face of the earth. Praise Yahuwah. So, brothers and sisters, Yah commands set apartness, even in how our people were to deal with the nations that they were, uh, whose land they were coming into. Praise Yah, but Yah was giving our, our people, giving our, our ancestors that land. And Yah had a zero tolerance policy 
when it came to not just the practices of the people, but the people themselves. He I said, destroy them all. Other places, he said that destroy everything that breathes, even little suckling babies. Destroy everything that breathes. Praise Yah. You know, people people look at that and they just say, "Well, oh, that's just so cruel. Why would he do that? Oh, the little babies, the little you know, little children, little infants. Yeah, but what are they going to grow up to be? Mm-hmm. Praise God, going to grow up to be monsters, grow up right. to be you know, c- completely wicked and corrupt the earth. And Yah said, destroy them all, everything that breathes, and destroy their artifacts, their images, and their idols. Praise Yahuwah, their... their fetishes and all this whatever stuff they had that was a part of their system of worship. Yah said, destroy it all. Praise Yah. Because Yah wanted a completely set apart environment in order for His people to prosper in His ways. Praise Yah. And see, you know, I, I, I say that because that even though you know we're in the land of our captivity, and we, there, there's only so far we can go in our set apartness because we don't have the same setup as our forefathers did. We're not in our own land. We're not the ones making the rules, praise Yah. So we, we do have to be in this heathen world and go out and work and earn a living and interact with people. Praise Yah. So we have to deal with that more so uh, than our forefathers did. But when it comes to our own environment and what we are able to control, the same rules apply. Praise Yah. That we're not to bring the world into our environment, into our homes. Praise Yah. But we're to keep that keep that stuff outside. Hallelujah. And so if we jump to uh, verses 25 and 26, same chapter. It says, The carved images of their mighty ones you are to burn with fire. Do not covet the silver or gold that is on them, nor take it for yourselves, lest you be snared by it, for it is an abomination to Yahuwah your Elohim. And do not bring an abomination into your house, lest you be accursed like it. Utterly loathe it and utterly, utterly hate it, for it is accursed. Praise Yahuwah. See, that's another thing. We gotta, we gotta watch out when it comes to, uh, cursed items, cursed objects, and bringing stuff like that into our homes. See, there's, there's cursed objects that pass themselves off as artwork. And people, and even some of our people, bring that stuff right into their homes. Y'all know what a dream catcher is? It's like this, it's the, uh, so-called Native Americans. You know, that they would have like a, it was like a circle. Usually it's on a stick. It's like a wooden circle. And they would have just this thread material. It would be, it would be threaded throughout the circle. And they would have feathers on it. And it's called a dream catcher. And what, what people are supposed to do is hang it on their bed. And what that'll do is that'll catch all the bad dreams that you could be having, but see, you shouldn't have bad dreams when you have this dream catcher up because that'll catch those bad dreams while you're sleeping. Praise Yah. And people put stuff like that up in their house. They put it up as artwork. They have no, no idea of the folklore behind it or the purpose of it. And, oh, I went to a, I went, went to a Native American store, and oh, I just got this neat thing. I think I'll put it up. And here you curse your whole house, right? A curse upon your house. Praise Yahuwah. You know the, these. Uh, if you've ever been to people's houses and these sun images that people had that got a face on it, got a smiley face, and it's a sun. So those Mexican sun gods is what that is. People put stuff like that do right up in their house. Artwork. Praise Yah. We can't bring that type of stuff into our homes, brothers and sisters. Praise Yahuwah. So we got to be careful. We got to be careful. We live in a wicked world. Praise Yah. We live. We live in a wicked world that is not supportive of our emuna and of our belief. And so the heathens, they have, they have all kind of stuff like that. They don't care. 
And so even even this corporate world, they got all kind of stuff on cereal boxes and food and stuff that you know we we buy. So your devil's slick, you know that if he can't trick you into bringing some of that artwork into your home, that he'll he'll try to sneak it in on the sly. Put witchcraft and Satanism symbols even on the stuff we buy and whatnot. That's why what we do when we see that type of stuff, we, we cross that stuff out. Praise Yah. You gotta watch that. And the enemy has slipped that right in. Praise Yah. But, our, but they were told not to bring this stuff into their house. See, Yah was preparing them for set apartness. They were going into the, the land of promise. Now, turn to Yikra, Leviticus chapter 20. Leviticus 20. Leviticus 20, we're going to start in verse 22. It reads, And you shall guard all my laws and all my right rulings and do them, so that the land where I am bringing you to dwell does not vomit you out. And do not walk in the laws of the nation which I am driving out before you. For they do all these, and therefore I loathe them. But I say to you, you are going to possess their land, and I myself give it to you to possess it. A land flowing with milk and honey. I am Yahuwah your Elohim, who has separated you from the peoples. And you shall make a distinction between clean beasts and unclean, and between unclean birds and clean. And do not make yourselves abominable by beast or by bird, or whatever creeps on the ground, which I have separated from you is unclean. And you shall be Kodesh to me, for I, Yahuwah, am Kodesh, and I have separated you from the peoples to be mine. Praise Yah. See, I believe it's in Amos where Yah says, You only have I known out of all the families of the earth. Praise Yah. Therefore, I will punish you for your iniquity. So when Yah says, I have separated you from the peoples, that you should be mine. See, that's a flat out lie. You got some people that believe that Yah has, uh, you know, Yah revealed himself to different groups of people around the world, not just Yahshua all, but just, uh, you know, d throughout the world, he'd reveal himself to different people and they just express their belief in different ways. That's why you have the different religions of the world. Now, uh, Yah said, I have separated you from the peoples. You only have I known of all the families of the earth. Praise Yahuwah. And so because of that, because we know that, that uh, all of our people came from Noah, praise Yah. But then as Noah's children began to have children and their children began to have children, not everybody stayed with the path of righteousness. And so because of that, that, you had the righteous seed that continued, but everybody else went off into idolatry. Everybody else went off into worship and other mighty ones. Praise God. This is Noah's descendants now. Noah, preacher of righteousness. So it shows you just how quickly we can get away from righteousness like that. Praise God. But Yah has severed us from the other nations, the other people. That, and, and for what purpose? Why? So that we can be his. He said, you're to be Kodesh unto me. You're to be separated unto me. I don't want to share you mm -hmm. with the world. But you are to be completely mine. But if you're going to be completely mine, then there's a way that you're going to have to come to me. You can't just come in the old kind of way. Hallelujah. All right, back to Deborah, back to Deuteronomy. We're going to look at uh, another precept here before we go into an example that I want to show but Deuteronomy 12, Deverim, Deuteronomy 12, we're going to start in verse 29. It reads, when Yahuwah your Elohim cuts off from before you the nations which you go to possess, to dispossess, and you dispossess them and dwell in their land, guard yourself 
that you are not in, to you are not ensnared to follow them after they are destroyed from before you, and that you did not inquire about their mighty ones, saying, How did these nations serve their mighty ones, and let me do so too? Do not do so to Yahuwah your Elohim, for every abomination which Yahuwah hates they have done to their mighty ones, for they even burn their sons and daughters in the fire to their mighty ones. All the words I am commanding you, guard to do it, do not add to it, nor take away from it. Praise Yah. Interesting how in that last passage, Yah said that how the, these, the nations that you're going to go dispossess, and how they have... Uh, done all these abominations, therefore I loathe them. You know what loathe means? It means hate. So in other words, Yah saying, I hated them because of that. Yah doesn't love everybody. Praise Yahweh. There are some people who Yah hates. He hates all workers of iniquity. That's what Tehillim, Psalms 5 5 says. Praise Yahuwah. And so here. It's saying, after you have dispossessed them, after you've destroyed them, don't go inquire and how, how did they serve their mighty ones. Mm -hmm. See, it's one thing if you are a conquered people, because Yah said that we will be scattered from one end of the earth to the other. This is when you start speaking of the curses. said so you'll be scattered from one end of the earth to the other. There you shall worship other mighty ones, wood and stone. Well, the reason for us worshiping other mighty ones, wood and stone, is because we are a dominated people. We are a dominated people, and our dominators did with us whatever they wanted. If they wanted to rob us of our history, if they wanted to rob us of our culture, if they wanted to fill our minds with lies, they had the liberty to do so. Mm -hmm. But Yah's saying, when you have conquered these people, don't you go inquire and, hey, how do they worship other oh, mighty ones. Yeah, you know, let me let me do so also. Now it's interesting in verse thirty one it says, Do not do so to Yahweh your Elohim. In other words, that don't you try to mix this thing up. When I teach you how to worship me, when I teach you how to approach me, don't call yourself approaching me, but take some of these ways of these heathens in ways in which they worship their mighty ones and incorporate it in your approaching to me, mm -hmm. in your service toward me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like I said, the, the, what, what angered Yah the most was this mixed worship. Angered him more than just being straight backslid, not even proclaiming Yah, not even putting the name of Yah in your mouth. Praise Yah. But then proclaiming Yah, Saying that you're serving Yah, but weaving in those abominations, weaving in the ways of the heathen. See, we understand that perfectly. You get on, if you got a bunch of Hebrew Israelites as Facebook friends, they wait till the holidays come around. Yeah. Christmas, Easter, Halloween, and you'll see it. You'll see all the scriptures against it and people condemning it and, and all of that. Praise Yahuwah. But the thing is, it's like when we, when I learned about the holidays, praise Yah, I learned not only that these holidays were pagan, but I learned as far as, uh, as far as why these things are offensive to Yah. See, I learned about these holidays out of Devarim 12 where it says you're not to do so unto Yahuwah your Elohim. In other words, what's wrong with those holidays is not just that they're pagan in and of themselves. It's just that people are calling themselves serving Yah and incorporating that heathenism in their service toward Yah. Mm -hmm. That's what's especially offensive about pagan holidays. And so that, that uh, us as, as awakened Israelites, we jump all over those holidays. But there are other ways in which we incorporate the ways of the heathen in our service toward Yah that are not as noticeable as the holidays. We'll condemn those holidays, condemn them Christian churches for keeping the holidays and whatnot. Praise Yah. But then we have our own way of, of mixing it up. And Yah is not pleased. Praise Yah. So let me give you an example of this. Turn to Deborah, Turn to uh, Shemot, Exodus, Exodus 32. Exodus 32. Exodus chapter 32. Starting in verse 1. 
says, And when the people saw that Mashal was so long in coming down from the mountain, the people gathered together to Aharon and said to him, Arise, make us mighty ones who go before us. For this Masha, the man who brought us up out of the land of Mitzrayim, we do not know what has become of him. And Aharon said to them, Take off the golden earrings which are in the ears of your wives, your sons, and your daughters, and bring them to me. And the people, and all the people took off the golden earrings which were in their ears, and brought them to Aharon, and he took from their hand, and he formed it with an engraving tool and made a molded calf. And they said, This is your mighty one, O Yashra'al, that brought you out of the land of Mitzrayim. And Aharon saw and built an altar before it. And Aharon called out and said, Tomorrow is a festival to Yahuwah. And they rose early on the next day and offered burnt offerings and brought peace offerings. And the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. And Yahuwah said to Masha, Go get down. For your people whom you brought out of the land of Mitzrayim have corrupted themselves. They have turned aside quickly out of the way which I commanded them. They have made themselves a molded calf and have bowed themselves to it and slaughtered to it and said, This is your mighty one, O Yashra'al, who brought you out of the land of Mitzrayim. Praise Yahuwah. So, brothers and sisters, there's a few things in here, a few things in here that, keep in mind, they still called themselves worshiping Yah. They brought burn offerings. They brought peace offerings. And they did not call themselves bringing burn offerings and peace offerings to Amun Ra. That's what that bull represents, that calf, that bull. They did not call themselves, that's what they were doing, but they did not call themselves doing that. They called themselves doing this thing under Yah. In fact, Aharon, he said, he said, tomorrow is a festival to Yahuwah, a Chag. Y'all remember hearing me talk about the Chag when we were dealing with the Shabbat last week, week before. Praise Yahuwah. See, the Chag, the festival, that there's only three uh, feasts that are called Chag or a festival. And that's the three pilgrim festivals. That's Matzo, Unleavened Bread, Shavuot, Feast of, Festival of Weeks, and then Sukkot, Tabernacles. Praise you. Well, those three are called the Chag, but uh, like Yom Teruah, Feast of Trumpets, that's not called a Chag, or Atonement, Yom Hakaparim, that's not called a Chag. Those are just Moedim. They're all Moedim, but the three pilgrim festivals are called the Chag. An interesting thing that Aharon said, tomorrow is the Chag to Yahuwah. This was not a festival that Aharon made up. This day, if you do the math, if you go through and you do the math and you count Shavuot, you, you count Shavuot correctly, that this was actually the day of Shavuot that he was referring to when he said, tomorrow is a Chag to Yahuwah. That, that was Shavuot. When you do the math, praise Yahuwah, because the, it was seven complete Shabbats plus 50 days. That was the day that Aharon was referring to, praise Yah. And see, that's why, brothers and sisters, we've got to prove all things and hold fast to that which is good. Praise Yah, that uh, some of y'all may have heard me on the Israel Now uh, broadcast in how we were debating about Shavuot and the timing of Shavuot. And I was very emphatic about Shavuot being the first fruits of the wheat harvest. Praise Yahuwah. And how the, the scriptural wheat harvest is in the summertime, not the springtime. And that was a, a point that I kept driving home and I kept, you know, the, the host of the show that I, I kept bringing him back to it and wanting a satisfactory answer. And I never got a satisfactory answer out of him. But what his defense was, was that in Jubilees, he would bring out of Jubilees how Abraham, how he kept Shavuot in the third month. Praise Yah. And my answer was that we don't consider Jubilees to be scripture. Because that's not scriptural as far as keeping Shavuot in the third month. See, Jubilees also says that Yah, he, he appointed the sun for months and for festival days. 
we know that that's not true because the in Psalm 104:19 says that he appointed the moon for the festivals and then Sirach 43 verses 5 and 6 talks about how the moon is for the festivals it's a sign of feasts the jubilee says it's the sun and when it mentions a moon it doesn't connect the moon with the months or the uh, festivals praise ya so that's false and, you know, people can talk about, oh, our people used jubilees in ancient times. But see, you can't prove to me, nobody can prove to me that what we have today is exactly the same as our forefathers had when they may have had that book. Praise God, because there have been so many additions and alterations and people with doctrinal agendas putting, putting stuff into there. Praise God. But see, one, one way we know that that Abraham see Abraham was only 430 years before Masha as far as the promise made to Abraham it was approximately 430 years from the promise to when the Torah was given all right and in Masha's time that when Masha called down the plague of hail upon Mitzrayim keep in mind Mitzrayim was within walking distance of Yashra'al so very similar agricultural um, type of setup there that they were they were able to grow a lot of the same things because they were pretty much in the same area. Praise Yahuwah. But um, if you remember with the plague of hail, that it said that, and this was in the first month. This is in the first month. It said that the barley and the flax were destroyed by the hail. But the wheat and the spelt were not destroyed by that hail because they are in the ground. Praise Yah. In the first month, they were in the ground. Praise Yah. When it was the first month in Yahushua's time, Yahushua said, Are there not four months to harvest? But I tell you, the harvest is ripe already. He was making reference to the wheat harvest, the scriptural wheat harvest. Praise Yahuwah. But even in Masha's day, that wheat was in the ground when that plague of hail came. So you can't tell me the first fruits of wheat harvest was ready two months later. Mm -hmm. After it was down in the ground. I don't care what Jubilees or anything else says. I don't care if a Moloch from the Shamaim come and told you that. I say he lying. Praise Yah, Because the scripture says that wheat was in the ground on the first month. This is in Masha's time. It's only 400 some odd years between Masha and Abraham. So agriculture couldn't have changed that much in that range of time. And so just bringing it back here that this was the day of Shavuot that they did this. When you do the math, it was seven complete Shabbats from that previous first fruits plus 50 days. And that's when we got here. So Aharon was not making up his own festival. That this was at, this was on an actual festival day, and they are bringing burnt offerings, and they are bringing peace offerings, and they were calling themselves serving Yah, but they made that golden calf. And you notice after they brought the the burnt offerings and peace offerings, it said, and then the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. Praise Yahuwah. They were expressing what was really on their hearts. Praise Yah. By eating and drinking and rising up to play. Praise Yah. They wasn't just, you know, getting up and, and like just playing games like children and all that. Praise Yahuwah. These people were doing their sin, their wickedness. And, and Yah was especially angry at this mixed worship. This is probably one of the best examples in Scripture of not putting difference between the Kodesh and the profane, but mixing it together. Praise Yah. You see, that when I was in Christianity, of course, one of the, uh, when, when it came to preaching Kodesh, that, you know, one of the, the big, items would be outward appearance and clothing and how i'd be in churches you know before i got into you know the code of shah i'd be in churches where people would say well yah yah doesn't look at outward appearance he looks at the heart and just make all kind of excuses about oh it's about the heart it's not about how you dress but see how you dress is a reflection of what's going on inside of you praise yahuwah 
See, if you're a whoremonger, if you want to go around top town and you want to find some loose women, that's one way that you will be able to tell who's a loose woman is how they dress. There are certain types of women. Let's say that, that you're a whoremonger, you just want to go to a general store and pick up on women. There are certain women that a whoremonger would just pass on by, not even give them a thought because of the way they're dressed. And then there are certain women because of the way they are dressed, hey, I want to talk to that one there. Praise Yah. Because he's thinking in his mind, yeah, that's somebody I can score with. And see, that's where we have to be set apart, men and women now. Men and women, even in our outward appearance. Y'all heard me minister on that uh, message months ago about should women wear pants. We came from Devarim 22.5 where it says, The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man, neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. For all who do such are abomination unto Yahuwah. It doesn't say that the act itself is abomination, which it is. It said, All who do such are abomination unto Yahuwah. The people that do it are abomination. That's why we can't roll the dice with something like that. Praise Yah. All throughout this Israelite movement, you know, you got women wearing their pants and, and they make their excuses for it, and especially people who know the Hebrew. People who know the Hebrew, and, and this is what really amazes me about how, see, when you're looking for an excuse for your sin, you will find it. Praise God. That word used for man, the woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man, is gaber. And that word Gaber in the Hebrew, that it could either be a warrior or a soldier or it could be a mighty man in general. So you have to know the context of it to know what it's talking about. And so what they say is, oh, that's talking about a ritual where women would put on soldiers' armor and go into a temple and do, do false worship. That's all that's talking about. Praise God. But all a person has to do is complete the verse. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man, neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. All who do such are abomination. Praise Yahuwah. And so that if that's the case, if that's only talking about some ritual of soldier's armor, that just means that only a soldier is not to put on a woman's garment. Mm -hmm. That a regular man can put on a woman's garment, it's all right. I was talking to some brother that, that calls himself deep in the Hebrew. You know, and always, you know, just so harshly critical about uh, people, about, about brethren, especially teachers that don't know the language and can't teach from the text. And almost every, you know, almost every Facebook post he puts on there is tearing down just people who don't teach from the original text. He's so deep in the Hebrew. Praise God. And I posted my video, and here he comes posting some video of his teacher. You know, right down in my comments and whatnot, when I post my video, I'll remove that. I said, no, no, uh-uh, you're not putting any links. Because you all have had your time and your space to get your message out. Now it's my time and my space. So I'm not going to be used as a vehicle to put out your falsehood. Praise God, because here they call themselves breaking down the original language and showing what it really means. Praise God. And so I message this brother. And I said, okay, well, okay, so, so what you're telling me, are you telling me that it's, it's okay for a man to cross dress? He never gave me an answer. He avoided my question like the plague. Praise God. I mean, common sense. I mean, a child can discern that, that, that something's just plain wrong with Medea. People, oh, ha, 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 oh, that's so funny, ha, ha, ha. But now something's wrong with that. Praise Yah. You don't even need Devarim 22.5 to discern that something's wrong with that. Right. Praise Yah. But see, according to this Hebraic, deep Hebraic teaching, that, oh, that's only talking about a soldier and whatnot, maybe is okay then. That's right. As long as, as, long as no homosexual act is committed, maybe is okay. You don't know who Mehdi is, don't worry about it. You don't need to know. Praise Yahuwah. See, you see the folly of that kind of thinking. That's true. Where we reject common sense because we want to justify our sin. Praise Yah. You know, and I've, I've even mentioned makeup before. You know, in, in the wearing of makeup. In the origins of, of uh, makeup. Praise Yah. And how that's not something that set apart women should, that's not a practice. 
that set-apart women should employ, that when we read about makeup in the Scriptures, every single example of makeup in the Scriptures is negative. It connects makeup with whoredom and seductiveness. Praise Yahuwah. And when we look at the origins of it, that from what I understand, the furthest back origins of uh, makeup, like historically speaking, I mean, I know that people talk about fallen, you know, the fallen ones and how they introduced it and all of that. But as far as just accepted history and whatnot, that uh, Samarimus, when they had that image of Samarimus, that women would wear makeup. This is in ancient Egypt now, Mitzrayim. Women would wear makeup in order to emulate Samarimus. Praise Yah. Samarimus would be that. That's like the the major uh, female deity that we read about in the scriptures. Our, our Isis, Ashtoreth. You know, she goes by different names and whatnot. Praise Yah. But they would wear makeup in order to emulate Samarimus because the image of Samarimus was painted up like that. Praise Yah. But see, you tell people stuff like this, and see, if, if people want to hang on to something, they will. I heard a, a, a sister talking about how, oh, historically speaking, there was a time when they found, you know, some, some artifacts in ancient Israel where the women would make makeup with. Praise Yah. Well, brothers and sisters, that's not good enough because the thing is, you don't know what condition our people were in when that was found. Praise Yah. How do you know that our women were doing that while we were in a righteous condition before Yah? Because there are times when we would backslide and take on the ways of the nation. So I don't doubt if something like that might have been found in archaeology. But Yah calls us to be a set apart people. Praise Yahuwah. That people should be able to tell who we are even by our outward appearance. It shouldn't be a thing we just blend in with all these heathens that are not even trying to serve Yah. And then the only way they know we serve Yah is because when we open our mouth and then our, our, our speech is different. Our conversation is different. But when we look just like them, we got our gangsta swag, look just like them. But then we speak, oh, okay, he serves Yah because his speech and whatnot. Praise Yah, looking worldly, looking just like the world, have our sports gear on and all that. You know, our favorite sports team. And we're out there at the ball games and out there shooting and shouting and cheering and, and they're doing the wave and it comes over to us and we... <sighs> <sighs> just like the heathen. You know, people see us, we just blend right in, but oh, we start talking and quoting scripture, and oh, oh, okay, he serves Yah. We thought he was one of us until he started speaking. No, no, -uh. they should know that we, that, that we are his even by the way we appear outwardly. Praise Yahuwah. See, you may have, a, there may be a sister that's in distress, and she's, and she's saying to herself, I need somebody to talk to. I need somebody to talk to about Yah, a woman who's truly set apart and whatnot. And she's just maybe looking around at a store or something, or somebody who she could just point out just by looking at them that this person probably serving Yah. I'm going to approach them. But if we blend in with everybody else, then that couldn't happen. Praise Yah. Because you're not out quoting scripture 24-7. A lot of times you're just out doing your do and whatnot, and you blend in, you look just like the world. Somebody can't, somebody who's looking for a person of Yah to come and get some counsel from and get some help from, they can't pick you out. Because you blend right in. Because you're not putting difference between the Kodesh and the profane. Praise Yah. Praise Yah. You see, that's a, uh, there was a, a brother that gave a testimony when we were down in Louisiana about how him, him and his family there were watching the Super Bowl. Watching the Super Bowl in their home. Just into that stuff, just like the heathen. And on the halftime show, I believe it was Paul McCartney. He used to be with the Beatles. And how he was doing the halftime show and he was doing some type of hand signals that later on people figured out it was witchcraft. And that brother said that a curse came on his home. 
and stuff just started going crazy in his home afterwards. Because Paul McCartney's on there at the halftime show, the Super Bowl, doing these witchcraft hand signals. See, these people know exactly what they're doing. That's not accidental and whatnot. Janet Jackson and how that that her 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 breast fell out at a halftime show had a satanic symbol on it. That stuff is not accidental. Got to understand that these people know that about a billion people are going to be able to see this thing worldwide. So they make sure they weave their devilment into it. And here we are as y'all's people just drinking it up just like the world is. Oh, because we want to be entertained. Because we're not putting difference between the Kodesh and the profane. Praise Yahoo, another area of set-apartness. That's an issue, especially with Hebrew Israelites, is music. Music. Praise Yahweh, who are taking worldly music forms and calling ourselves giving Yah praise with it. Praise Yah. We have to understand there is a due order when it comes to approaching Yah. See, especially when I was in the Charismatics, they had this spirit on them where, hey, Yah just sees the heart. And anything we do in our heart to express our love and worship toward Yah, He accepts like that. So you had any and every kind of musical form there. You had this hard, heavy metal Christian rock and whatnot and just... Just uh, b because, hey, it, it's what's in the heart that counts. But see, the thing is, Daoud and his people, they had it in their hearts to worship Yah and to please Yah. Praise Yah when they were bringing the ark back in. You remember that? They were bringing the ark back in and they had it on the, they were having it pulled on a cart with oxen. And that oxen stumbled and, and that uh, ooze up. He went to go and rescue it, to pick it up, keep it from hitting the ground, and Yah struck him. Praise Yah. Even though they called themselves bringing the ark back and singing and praising Yah, Yah struck that man. And later on, we read that it was done because they did not come after the due order. So when they got the due order right, praise Yah, they got their instrumentation right. Praise Yah, they, they made sure it was the Luites that were bringing in the ark on the poles, just like it says in the Torah, and then Yah barocked it. Yeah. When they came according to the due order. That's right. Praise Yahuwah. See, brothers and sisters, I do believe there is a thing called set apart music. And that's just, that's another topic in and of itself that would take me a while to really go through. Praise Yah. So I'm not going to get fully into it now, but I do believe that there is a thing called set-apart music. I don't believe in this spirit that's on a lot of the churches and even in the Israelite movement, praise God, that you can have worldly sensual music and mix it with the praises of Yah. Praise God. See, some people think it's only the lyrics that count. As long as the lyrics are set apart, you can use any type of music you want. So they play this, this house music, this bumping house music and whatnot that we used to listen to when we go to the clubs. To try to pick up women. They play that type of music in the clubs for a reason. That type of music incites lust. Praise Yah. And then here we are mixing the praises of Yah right in with that. See, I believe, brothers and sisters, that just like you should be able to look across a parking lot and see a set-apart individual, praise Yah, you should be able to listen to music in somebody's car across the parking lot and tell whether that person is Kodesh or not. Praise Yah. It shouldn't be a thing where you're hearing this ba boom ba boom ba boom and, and it's like it, it, it could either be Little Wayne or it could be some Kodesh music. But you can't tell just by listening. Oh, you, you got to hear the words in order to tell whether it's Kodesh or not. No, that's not Yah's way. That's not Yah's way. You should be able to tell just by listening to the music itself whether it's Kodesh. It's not just the lyrics. Praise Yah. You have to understand Hashatan, he, that he, he energizes people to put out certain types of music for a reason. 
hypnotize people, mesmerize people, get his devilment inside of people. Praise Yah. Get them in a state of mind where they can receive his poison. We take that same type of music and call ourselves praising Yah with it. We think Yah accepts that. We think Yah accepts that. Even when you gave a voluntary offering in the Torah, Yah had, Yah had a prescription for it, how it had to be. Something that wasn't required. You just say, I'm just going to do this unto Yah voluntarily. Yah says, okay, you're going to do it. This is how you're going to do it, even though it's voluntary. That's right. So you can't say that, oh, just because someone has it in their heart to make an offering to Yah, they can bring it any old kind of way. They can't. Must put difference between the Kodesh and the profane. Praise Yah. See, speech is another area. Now, this is, this is a real zinger here. Comes to the Israelite movement. I've seen brethren, apostolic, Pentecostal, holiness background, clean speech before they come into this Hebrew Israelite movement using all kind of profanity now and whatnot. Because having clean speech that apparently, according to this movement, oh, that's Christian. That's Christian where you say you can't use profanity like that. That's a Christian thing. And so you have you have brethren that have that background who, whose speech was clean, just especially when they get upset. See, see that, that's, that's how you can really tell what kind of spirit's behind it. Especially when they get upset, they use profanity. And that's why they call it profanity. See, you notice I didn't say cuss words. Because, see, that's their angle on it. Cussing means cursing like that. And so that's what they say is that cussing means cursing. And so that's not the same thing. And we have a bastardized language. They have some doctrine with it where they justify themselves. I'm not talking about cussing. I'm talking about profanity according to what we're reading here. That which is not Kodesh, not set apart to Yah. We have to understand the message that we're sending to people, brothers and sisters. Even though you can do your little uh, etymology and, and word search and this and that, it, it, it's just like uh, there's this white man. There's this white man that approached me on a feast one time. This is a Feast of Unleavened Bread. I was in Arkansas. And he was showing me in Acts 13 about the different prophets and brethren that got together. Praise Yah. And one of them was, you know, who's historically called Niger. But he was pointing out in the concordance how that's not the way you really pronounce that. The way you really pronounce that is nigger. Nigger or nigger. Can you imagine some pastor gets up and yes, and Simeon and nigger and they all got together and this and that. Now you may be etymology, you may be etymologically correct. In saying that, but look at the effect you're going to have. You're probably going to get in a fight. You're a white man getting up and talking about Simeon and nigger. That's how you pronounce it. Look at the Greek. That's how you pronounce it. But out of wisdom, pastors throughout the ages would pronounce it Niger. Like that. And it's the same thing where the, it doesn't matter what the etymology is. You send a message when you drop the F bomb or the S bomb and all that. You send a message. And it's not a good message. It's not a clean message. It's not a Kodesh message That's right. that you're sending. Praise Yahuwah. Praise Yah. We have to be set apart. Speech is one of the things that sets us apart. What do the heathen do when they get angry? They use profanity. So, so we should do the same thing. Praise Yah. It used to be that when we were in the church, praise Yah, and we are around more people that knew us down in Louisiana. And there, there may be heathens around us. And they'd be, they'd be using profanity and then see that we're nearby. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Just the conviction that would come upon them. Because they knew we were set apart from that. Praise Yah. But that would be sad, brothers and sisters, if let's say you're at work. And, and here, here your co-workers, your heathen co-workers use profanity. And they know you use profanity, and they're all sitting around and talking all their trash, and you come and doesn't phase them. They keep talking their trash because they know you talk trash. You talk trash too. You just mix scripture in with it. Praise Yah. So, brothers and sisters, we cannot mix the kodesh with the profane. Yah rebuked the kohanim for doing so. Praise Yahuwah. Another area would be just customs. 
Because I know we talk about holidays and whatnot, but then there are even heathen customs, brothers and sisters, that, that we as awakened Israelites, that, that we uh, take on and don't separate ourselves from, but they're offensive unto Yah. You hear people talk about good luck. Good luck. You know what luck is? You know where that comes from? Lucifer. Good luck. You're praying a, you're pr praying a blessing of Lucifer on somebody. When you say good luck, but you got people that say that. Just because it's just a part of our culture. Praise Yah. The names of the days of the week and the months of the year. Praise Yah. These are names of pagan deities and whatnot. Praise Yah. And see, sometimes when people hear stuff like that and they say, oh, no, no, but we're a part of this culture and we just have to deal with that. And how are you going to communicate with people? And I, I ask people, people who have a problem with that, I ask them the same question every time. Praise Yah. And I always get the same answer. Because when it comes to the days of the week, for example, and I ask this question, I say, if the world were to decide to change the names of the days of the week, the first three days of the week, they're going to change them to Baal's day, Molech's day, and Satan's day. Would you go around using that terminology? Would you say, hey, uh, we're going to come over and we're going to clean your house on Satan's day? Would you change your terminology if the world changed? Every time I ask people that, they say, no, I would not. No, I wouldn't use that terminology. But see, what's the difference between doing that and then using the Monday, Moon Day, Sunday, Sun God Day, T-U's Day, T-U, the deity of war, Wednesday, Woden's Day, pagan deities. Praise Yah. What's the difference? What's the difference? Praise Yah. The people say, well, we're in this world. How are you going to get around it? I'm going to tell you, I prayed about that. Because, see, I'm a businessman. I'm an entrepreneur. I have to deal with people every day. I've got to deal with worldly people every day. Praise Yah. This is the wisdom that Yah gave me in dealing with it. Praise Yah. If I have to tell people a, a certain day that I'm going to come and do work for them, I'll say, well, I'll tell you what, can I come on your Thursday? Can I come on your Monday? See, it's your Monday. I don't honor those deities. It's not my Monday. It's my second day of the week. But it's your Monday. That's why I say, can I come on your Monday? Most of the time it just goes right over people's heads. Praise Yah. That's how Yah gave me the wisdom to be able to even use those words, but use it in a context where I'm not memorializing those pagan deities like the world is. I'm acknowledging that that's your God's day and whatnot. And a lot of times they don't even realize what I'm doing. Praise Yah. See, if any man lack wisdom, let him ask of Yah that gives to all men liberally and upbraids not. Praise Yah. If we're not sure how to incorporate something or how to be Kodesh in a certain area where it seems like all the odds are against us, pray. Pray for wisdom. Yah will show you how. If Yah guides, Yah provides. If Yah wants you to behave yourself in a certain way, praise Yah, in the land of our captivity, in the land of our enemies, He'll provide a way for you to do so. Praise Yahuwah. Praise Yah. So we got to watch these things, brethren, brothers and sisters. we got to be set apart. Now, I want to I wrap this up by, uh, let's go to John 15. I want to look at some things that uh, Yahusha had to say, and then even Yochanan himself. We're talking about the Kodesh and the profane. The Kodesh and the profane. And as I said at the beginning of this teaching, the opposite of Kodesh is profane or common. We don't want to be common. We don't want to be another brick in the wall. Praise Yahuwah. For we want to be set apart unto Yah. All right, Yochanan chapter 15, verse 18. It says that the world hates you, know that it hated me before you. If you are of the world, the world will love its own, but because you are not of the world, yet I choose you out of I chose you out of the world, for that reason the world hates you. Remember the word that I said to you, a servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they shall persecute you too. If they have guarded my word, they would guard yours too. But all this they shall do to you because of my name, because they do not know him who sent me. Praise Yahuwah. See, Yahushua even broke it down to even the spiritual element of it. 
Praise Yahuwah. That there is a spiritual connection that the world will make with you if you are of the world. And they will treat you as one of their own if they feel they have that connection with you. Praise Yahuwah. And what's sad is that the world feels that they have that kind of connection with a lot of us. Because we've got a worldly spirit. And what not. But if you don't have a worldly spirit, if you have the set apart spirit, see the world recognizes that disconnect right away. The world recognizes that ah, he, he's not one of us. He's different. And see, that's how it should be when they encounter us. See, when I was in some of these churches and whatnot, they had this this human philosophy. It wasn't of Yah. This this man's wisdom, this human philosophy that, oh, if you can be like the world, then you can reach them and whatnot. So you want to go reach the bikers and you got to, you know, you got to dress like a biker and get you some tattoos and whatnot and, and go amongst them and be, make out like you're one of them so you can reach them for the Lord and whatnot. You want to reach the, the heavy metal rock and rollers, and you got to be a heavy metal rock and roller too, so you can speak their language. Same thing with this gangster rap business. You got to have your gangster swag and whatnot. You got to you got to have that about you if you're going to reach people with truth. Praise God. See, I heard a preacher say before that what you do to get them is what you're going to have to do to keep them. Praise Yah. If you get them through worldly means, you're going to have to keep worldly means in order to maintain them because they're not really being drawn to Yah. See, we want to draw people to Yah. Praise Yah. We want to draw people to Him. We don't want to draw people to us and our personality. Praise Yah. And so, brothers and sisters, the, the world that, if the world, think about this, this is the test. All right? If any setting where you're in the world, your workplace or just your family or whatever, if it's a situation where if it was Yahusha that was on the scene and they would hate him, but then they'd love you, something's wrong. Praise Yah. See, they would hate him because he's so set apart. But see, they love you because they can identify with you. See, no, that should not be, brothers and sisters. He said, if they hated me, they will hate you also. That is, if you're following me now. Right. You're compromising. They know they'll hate me, but they'll love you. Praise Yah. See, that's why I believe it's in Yochanan 12. It said that many of the chief rulers, they believed on Yahusha, but they would not confess him. Mm -hmm. For they love the praise of men more than the praise of Yah. That's part of the reason why we refuse to be set apart. We refuse to put difference between the Kodesh and the profane because we love the praise of, of men more than the praise of Yah. Should not be, brothers and sisters. Now, first Yochanan, first John, first John two, a couple passages to go, and we're going to wrap this up. First John two, first John two, verse fifteen says, "Do not love the world, nor that which is in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. But all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life." is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passes away in the lust of it, but the one doing the desire of Elohim remains forever. Praise Yahuwah. So, lusts of the flesh. Praise Yahuwah. Lusts of the flesh. That's where we give ourselves over to, to alcohol and drugs and fornication, whoring. Lusts of the flesh. We're not able to temper ourselves, not able to exercise temperance. So we can be set apart unto Yahuwah, lust of the eyes, materialism, wanting to buy everything you see, wanting to, wanting to go beyond your means in order to have them clothes and whatnot, have that dress, have them shoes and whatnot, putting yourself deep into debt. So you can look fly before everybody. Lust of the eyes. Pride of life. Now this is where it gets tricky. Pride of life. Because you could have pride of life even in, 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 in this realm. You could have pride of life even about the, the group you're with. The camp you're with. The ministry you're with. Praise Yahuwah. Where you exalt yourselves instead of Yah. That's pride of life. And what not. You know, people have their favorite football team with their mascot and wearing it around on, on their jacket when they go around town. Pride of life. 
Praise us, not of the Father, but is of the world. I remember we'd have games, sport games when I was young, and the crowds, you know, they'd, there'd be uh, opposing sides of the crowds, and they'd be, they'd be shouting back and forth to one another, we got spirit, yes we do, we got spirit, how about you? And they'd say, we got spirit, yes we do, we got spirit, how about you? Praise I didn't even realize what they were saying. Praise you yeah, they had spirits, all right. But see, that's what that is. Pride of life. When we're giving something great esteem that has nothing to do with Yah, but has everything to do with us. Praise Yah. We're not esteeming Yah. Yahusha, his life's aim was to esteem the Father above all things, to magnify his Torah and make it honorable. And see, that should be our aim as well. Bring attention to Yah, not to self. All that fleshly stuff, all that swag, all that all that does is bring attention to ourselves. Show people how fine and dandy we are. Show people how cool we are. But Yah's not esteemed. Praise Yahuwah. All right. And then also, uh, chapter 5, verse 19, same book. 1 John, chapter 5, verse 19. It says, we know that we are of Elohim and all the world lies in the wicked one. In other words, the whole world lies in the power of the evil one, the power of the, of the wicked one. That's why, brothers and sisters, praise Yah, because see, some people, some people are put off by uh, preaching like this. The people are like, oh, that's bondage. That's bondage. We shouldn't have to just go around on eggshells and worry about if we're saying the wrong thing or doing the wrong thing. But if you really have a heart to love Yah and to serve Yah and to please Yah, it won't be a bondage. Right. See, you have to understand that I've made this statement many times. This is my philosophy in approaching the world. The world is guilty until proven innocent. We see the guilt of the world right there. The, the, the Yochanan says the whole world lies in wickedness. It lies in the wicked one. Praise Yah. So the world is guilty until proven innocent. If you're not sure if you should, you should be using certain words or doing a certain custom, praise Yahuwah, and it's something that the world brings, it's not something that Yah brings, you're better safe than sorry. You're better safe to just leave it alone. Until you can prove that it's at least neutral, praise Yah. You're better off just leaving that alone, praise Yah. Because some things are of Yah, some things are of the wicked one, and then some things are neutral, praise Yah. You know, someone may say, well, is it okay to drive a car? You got some groups who won't drive a car, like the Amish. They drive horse and buggy. They won't know and drive a car and whatnot. You know, but I mean, I would liken a car unto a chariot. We know our people rode in chariots in time past. And in prophecy, it talks about in the end times, their chariots will be bustling against one another. Praise Yah. I don't believe they're talking about literal chariots when they're talking about the end time now. I believe that was the, the, the Nebaim's way of expressing what they were seeing. I believe they're talking about actual cars driving and whatnot. Praise Yah. So some things are neutral. Our people use swords. Our people, uh, praise Yahuwah, rode horses. Heathen used swords. Heathen rode horses. Praise Yahuwah. But when it comes, especially when it comes to things that are like customs, praise Yah, that in the country you live in, oh, we're keeping a special holiday at such and such a time, and we want you to come and be a part of our festivities. And you don't know anything about it. It's completely strange to you. Leave it alone. Leave it alone until you can prove that it's at least neutral. Praise Yahuwah. Or that it's righteous. The world is guilty until proven innocent. we got to be set apart unto Yah. See, only when we're set apart unto Yah, brothers and sisters, that we can truly be the salt of the earth that Yahushua calls us to. Because if the salt has lost its savor, it's good for nothing but to be thrown under the dunghill and to be trampled underfoot. Praise Yahuwah. See, it's that set-apartness, brothers and sisters, that's the savor of the salt. Praise Yah, as far as our presence in the world. But when we become worldly, 
We become like everybody else, dress like everybody else, talk like everybody else, listen to the same music that everybody else listens to and whatnot, and, and just engage in the same customs that everybody else engages in. Praise Yah, but oh, we quote scripture and whatnot. That's what makes us different. No. Praise Yah. We lose the savor of the salt when we do that, brothers and sisters. Praise Yah. We can see salt is supposed to preserve. It's a preservative. Praise Yah. We're supposed to preserve the righteousness in Kodeshah wherever we are. Praise Yah. Where Yah's people are. It shouldn't just decay and just go all downhill. There should be a presence of righteousness in Kodeshah where Yah's people are. We don't want to lose the savor of the salt, brothers and sisters. Praise Yahuwah. We've got to put difference between the Kodesh and the profane. Praise Yahuwah. So that's all for now. And with that, I will say, Shalom. Shalom.